Hi and welcome back from Oridev with the Night Hacking stream and now we have a new guest, Ray RK. Hi, Hi. Ray, nice that you, be, uh, that you are here and could you please introduce yourself, what, what are you doing here? Uh, my name is Ray, I am a uh, professional button pusher. I'm That's a good. DJ, VJ, yeah, like everybody here <laughs> is pretty much exactly. a professional button pusher. So I'm a mm, DJ, VJ, uh, producer, uh, basically a multimedia monkey. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, came from computer science and then went into design mm -hmm. as a sort of art director, which is a right. glorified term for pixel pusher. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, essentially over the years, I... Um, after quitting the, the advertising world, I uh, went freelance and I started focusing on uh, developing interactive DJ, VJ performances. Mm -hmm. So my thing is sort of bridging the gap between the artist and the audience using sensor technology like the Kinect or RealSense and uh, creating a feedback loop. Mm -hmm. So I use the crowd's motion to influence the sound that I play, to influ influence the uh, videos that I play, generate some visuals out of that. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much why I'm here. I'm responsible for the Chill Out Lounge. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've also had a session about using virtual reality to biohack yourself into fitness, which is something I've been struggling with as a, ner as a nerd myself for many years. Right. And uh, talking about that, you also brought something here. Right. Some uh, yeah. equipment. So um, there is this, um, I need to in introduce this. Um, so first of all, I'm pretty sure that most people are familiar with this headset that's the HTC Vive and uh, unfortunately the Vive is typically tethered so uh, when I first put it on I was really um, really impressed by the the level of immersion and mm -hmm. the quality of the tracking but mm -hmm. the movement was always restricted because no matter where you what you attach the cable to you're always sort of you, right, know, you have to, to be something. careful. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have to be careful, and it, it keeps breaking the immersion. No mm -hmm. matter how deep you're, you're into the whatever you're doing in VR, there's the cable, and it always messes with you. Um, so last year at IFA, I was um, I had a performance, um, and I saw um, a company called XMG. Mm -hmm. There's uh, it's a brand of uh, Schenker Technologies. They mm -hmm. are based in Leipzig in Germany, and uh, I saw that they make <laughs> a wearable backpack so this is basically a high-end gaming computer and it's been modified to um, run the Vive off a battery so you are no longer tethered you're basically tethered to the backpack only and that thing gives you complete freedom of movement and mm -hmm. it was the first time I um, even actually had more than like one minute to play any mm -hmm. VR game and uh, I found that the game that they had at the at the stand was a uh, space pirate trainer I'm not sure you can google that stuff um, but um, I'm pretty sure that all VR nerds know Space Pirate Trainer. And what I realized is um, that after mere five minutes of playing it, I was breathing heavily and uh, drenched in sweat almost. Right. So like a workout. Yeah. So, so I, I think I'm thinking that in this could be used to get over the initial hurdle of a workout. And uh, here, after my session, I've, I've set it up in the, in the lounge as a sort of arcade experience, mm -hmm. so people can, uh, can come and just, just try it for themselves. And um, I've, had, I, you know, I've, had, I've had kids there, I've had older gentlemen, m moms, so every, basically every, every age uh, and sex there is. And um, yeah, everybody... I tried it too. <laughs> and... Um, well, basically, the general consensus is that, yeah, everybody is so deeply immersed into playing that they don't notice how much physical exercise they're actually doing. So, um, right. Yeah. So to get a better idea, we actually brought a video or yeah. you brought it uh, with you uh, with you that we can um, show. So it, it shows like how you how you play that and also um, other people mostly because uh, me, me right. playing I could I could <laughs> right exactly it's not the exciting part because um, so what you see in this video is um, I've uh, also attached a wireless HDMI transmitter and uh, hooked that up to a projector so that the people who are actually in this room can watch the gameplay right. because it's not exciting to watch a nerd just wear a headset that's and jumping around in yeah, the room right yeah, like so you would not need that you only see yourself of course through um, the VR equipment but uh, to other people yeah. to being able to watch. Yeah, yeah. The reason I did that is because in that room I was actually supposed to do an installation with Connect, but mm -hmm. 
It turns out that that room has a huge circular bar in the middle of it, and the Kinect needs some space for a crowd to interact with. So instead, I just decided, hey, you know what? I got this with me anyway. It was part of my presentation. Why not turn this into a VR arcade? And right. it's even got more people in the room in the end. So I'm just playing some, some ambient music, and people are having fun. So this is pretty cool. Now, <coughs> why, did I, why did I even uh, do this stuff? So um, about four years ago, no, four and a half years ago, I was just about to quit the, the whole advertising mm -hmm. thing. And I realized that um, I was pretty much killing myself because as nerds, we have a very irregular day. Usually you have targets, you have deadlines. Uh, you stay up late, uh, you eat whatever you can grab, you drink whatever you can right. grab, your sleep is crap, your food is crap. This is just an You're unhealthy lifestyle. You're sitting the whole day and yeah. sitting in the front of the computer. Yeah, and I was, um, back then I was um, almost 20 kilos heavier than I am now. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I went to an event called the Biohacker Summit where mm -hmm. people taught me, um, a biohacking expert, actual biohacking experts, I'm just an enthusiast. They taught me basic stuff that I can change about my life without, mm -hmm. you know, shh, without... Um, changing my whole routine mm -hmm. and just turning my life around. Um, just, you know, basic uh, knowledge about nutrition, basic knowledge about um, circadian rhythm, so your, your body's natural rhythm, uh, ways to manage that. Um, and basically, um, they taught me how to not kill myself while, mm -hmm. while doing my job. And four years later, actually a little bit earlier, but over the course of the last four years, I just steadily dropped weight without actually doing anything. Mm -hmm. And I arrived at a point where a fitness expert told me what I was suspecting all the time is that, is that y when you change your diet and you change your habits, uh, you can optimize your body mm -hmm. to a certain degree, but there is a point beyond which you can't progress unless you actually do some physical mm -hmm. exercise. Mm -hmm. And now the thing with exercise is when I wake up in the morning, all I want is ideally for my inbox to be empty my phone to be quiet and just then give me my coffee, give me my keyboard, shut the door, get out. Yes, that's, that's, I that's totally can agree right? to that. <laughs> right? so it's, that's, that's, that's where I'm most comfortable. I will never ever in my life wake up and think, uh, let's go for a 5K run. <laughs> it's not happening. Okay. On the other hand, if I, for example, if I tell you to uh, drop down and uh, give me like 40 push-ups, you're gonna be able to do that because it's not like we're physically handicapped. Um, it's about getting from the sitting to the working out Moving, yeah. and this is where biohacking comes in so mm -hmm. biohacking i mean i'm i'm again not an expert on that on that subject but um if you regard the body as an organic computer it's like a series of intertwined and interdependent parts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then the sum of its parts the performance of the sum of the parts is only as good as yes, the weakest part as the whole yeah right? totally agree so um you need to optimize that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, um, again, I could not bring myself to work out. And after seeing the backpack, right. I figured, okay, let's, let's uh, see. Uh, you let's had the idea to, yeah. to use that. Yeah, of course. Now, now, we are nerds, so we need metrics. Mm -hmm. So right now, I'm in the middle of touring between, uh, between events like the Biohacker Summit, Overdev. Mm -hmm. And um, at uh, the Biohacker Summit, I met... Uh, the guys from Aura, they make a sensor ring. And this, is, this, is like oh a okay. this is like an inverse Fitbit. Uh -huh. So it doesn't track as much of your activity as it tracks your inactivity. So there's an app that oh tells okay. you. Okay. It kind of yeah. has this uh, small warning uh, window that shows you, oh, you've been sitting eight and a half hours today. Yeah. That's probably not the smartest thing to do. Oh, I, d I don't want one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <right>? just <laughs> I, know, I know, right? But, but the thing is, um, we need metrics to confirm right. the stuff that we're Absolutely. talking about. So this thing is mostly analyzing my sleep. I'm also going to use mm -hmm. probably a Fitbit or a Garmin to, to track my movement. Right. So right now, because I'm traveling a lot and uh, I'm doing all these things, and you meet awesome people, you talk to them, you spend half a night over right. a beer discussing some stuff, your body rhythm is irregular no matter how you try to hack it. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, doing a tour like this uh, allows me to establish a bad baseline, mm -hmm. a realistic, nerdy lifestyle baseline. And then afterwards, once I get home in a week, um, I'm actually going to start measuring this regularly. Mm -hmm. So start every day by just doing... Trying to see the trend, how that will... How yeah, how that will affect, so for, uh, affect the, my progress. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I mean, I can pretty much expect at this point that the results will be positive. But again, metrics, data, that's sexy. We need that. So um, yeah, that's uh, basically part of my goal. And eventually, I would, I would assume that it should be possible 
uh, for an actual workout curriculum to be built around VR games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this sounds this sounds very, very interesting, and uh, I like especially the part that you're basically also uh, hacking your habits, right? Because just to get over that threshold, over that hurdle, mm -hmm. that you want to move, because you're you're playing that video game actually, yeah, and you just have to play it with your whole body. So that's what I really like about that. Like you're doing a workout without even noticing, right? And at exactly. the end, you're just like, oh, this is actually quite exhausting. And yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, so that's really what what I like about it. The, the funny thing is, like, I mean, games offer an instant instant gratification mechanism. Absolutely. Because you shoot, you're shooting in Space Pirate Trainer, you're standing on a platform shooting drones, and they shoot back. So it's basically kind of like Duck Hunt meets Space Invaders, but the ducks have guns, and uh, yeah, it's yeah. in VR. Right. So um, yeah, you played it. I don't have to explain yeah, it to it's you. I'm just it's doing really it for great. Yeah, the sake we, we, of we the saw audience. the video. It's it's really amazing. So play, yeah. the thing is that um, where I, what I w sorry, I just need to catch the train of thought there. Um, yeah, as a nerd, I'm a gamer, so I grew up on, on stuff like Wolfenstein and Doom and stuff. So, so it's kind of in my right. blood. Mm -hmm. But you can see also that, that people, uh, people who have never touched it before, especially kids, mm -hmm. when they put on the Vive, they're instantly there. I it's they're really intuitive. The, the, but also, I've, I've seen older people as well mm -hmm. who just put the thing on, mm -hmm. and you don't really have to explain much of the gameplay mechanics to them. Right. They just go, okay, I have guns, I can shoot I them. I mean, you d you're just moving Boom. like naturally, right? Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. I, and I also tried it out, and you, you handed me like the guns, and I saw them in the mm. VR, and I was like, okay, here they are. That's, yeah. uh, that's, that's quite simple, and yeah. you just use them, and you use and your body, and you walk around like, yeah. like naturally. And uh, that, is, that is pretty amazing, just that technology itself. And I like the, the idea of connecting that to say, okay, let's hack the body, let's hack yeah, our yeah, habits to basically do a workout and get yeah. more active yeah. and, and, and use that to, to improve yourself, not only you know, have fun and game, but only mm -hmm. use, uh, also use that for, for a better purpose. Yeah, of course. I mean, biohacking is also very much about changing your habits, as mm -hmm. I did with the food and the stuff. Right, so right. So getting over that hurdle is is what i think most of us struggle with and that's like one method to beat it great great yeah so um for the oradev conference is it actually your first time that you are here this is my second time second time uh, okay yeah so yeah. what's your impression and and take away from the conference maybe also for attendees who cannot so attend uh, the oradev conference guys it's so amazing there's like like um there are conferences where you get so much content that you can't really decide what talk to go to and uh, the amount of awesome knowledge that you that you're presented with, and the people, like I, mm, how to describe this? I've been to I go to many events. Uh, some of them are um, from the pro audio um, mm -hmm. sector, and uh, I've rarely seen an event that is so well organized and so civilized overall, um, like Eurodef. And um, I haven't met a single person of whom I would say, oh, I don't really want to talk to them. Everybody has an interesting story. They are talking about interesting concepts. This year we've had Imogen Heap, and uh, Imogen Heap is this mind-blowing artist who basically does what I do, but 10 times better. She inspired me to, uh, because she uses the Kinect and custom-made glove controllers to control her performances. She was actually the, the woman who inspired me to okay. take that Kinect and mm -hmm. turn it around, point it at people. Mm -hmm. So getting to meet someone like that and listen to her talk about blockchain and, and set et cetera, just blew my mind. Wow. And so last year, I actually, um, during my session, I actually mentioned her. I was spent like five to ten minutes just talking about her, how she inspired me. And this year, I get to meet her. So um, in general, the atmosphere is great. The people are great. The food is great. The extracurricular activity is great. Uh, we went to a, to a sauna wh where you just mm -hmm. can dip in, in the sea to cool down. It's overall amazing. I can only recommend it. Awesome. So thanks, Gray. Thanks a lot for the interview and for Thank everybody you. watching. Well, thanks for watching. Bye. Cheers.